This video will explain the paper, Provably Efficient Online Hyperparameter Optimization with Population-Based Bandits, the Population-Based Bandit Optimization, PB2 Algorithm Extending on the Population-Based Training, and also papers like Population-Based Augmentation that have further explored this evolutionary algorithm for not only selecting a fixed configuration of hyperparameters, but having that hyperparameter configuration evolve throughout training, learning a schedule. And this algorithm is really useful for anyone who is working with uh, robotic control and these kind of applications. This is a really uh, important hyperparameter optimization algorithm for making these kinds of robotic control with deep learning, deep reinforced learning work in the real world or you know whichever kind of reinforced learning control setup. Here's a quick overview of the presentation. We'll start off with the motivation of hyperparameter tuning, looking at the determined AI hyperparameter suite and something that I've become really familiar with, with it, which is a tool for hyperparameter optimization and overall getting a sense of this problem of optimizing hyperparameters. Then we'll get into population-based training. This is an evolutionary search of hyperparameters, but different from most evolutionary search algorithms. It doesn't just learn a fixed configuration of the hyperparameters. The hyperparameter configuration evolves throughout training. So you, we'll get more into the details of the algorithm exactly, but you have this evolution of the hyperparameter configuration throughout training. So then we'll look at the new extension, population-based bandit uh, two, or population-based bandit optimization PB2. And this is combining the evolutionary search with a Bayesian controller, where the Bayesian controller is choosing how to uh, mutate the top K percent of the uh, agents in the population. And then they also have things like uh, discussing how you can parallelize this with the uh, Gaussian process kernel and then regret bounds for this both of which I've omitted from the video because I don't completely understand it. But if anyone wants to you know, provide a co an explanation of this in the comments of the video, I'd be happy to entertain this kind of discussion. Uh, then a comparison with ASHA. ASHA is the asynchronous uh, distributed learning algorithm, uh, hyperparameter search algorithm uh, is a really strong baseline for this kind of uh, hyperparameter tuning. And I personally have gotten to know this a lot by setting the determined system. And ASHA is great because they describe these problems with ha having this synchronized uh, controller. So Bayesian optimization, you have to have a synchronized controller. It's harder, harder to parallelize it. So ASHA is a way to do this resource allocation without having some kind of centralized uh, controller that requires this kind of you know, wait for all the all the different distributed training systems to sync up to update the controller. So then we'll look at the experiments with on policy, off policy learning, and particularly important for anyone who's working with their own robotic experiments, they show how this uh, PB2 algorithm really improves the efficiency of these algorithms for robotic control compared to the original population-based training uh, idea. So as a quick reminder, deep learning training algorithms have all these different hyperparameters that will have a heavy influence on the uh, training of the model. So as a quick example, this is the determined AI interface, something that I've become really familiar with, with uh, which is a tool for all sorts of different things with model training, artifact tracking, but also hyperparameter optimization with the ASHA algorithm that we'll get into later in this video as it's compared with this PB2 algorithm. So we usually have things like batch size, learning rate, uh, learning rate schedulers or weight decay and uh, the epsilon parameters on the on the momentum optimizer and these different kinds of ideas and then robotic learning you might also have these uh, you know say you have an experience replay buffer the size of that queue how often you're sampling from it to replay episodes and these different uh, like queue learning or say discounted rewards where you have this gamma factor where you're uh, discount and rewards into the future time steps, so on. You have all these hyperparameters that make an enormous difference, particularly for these uh, reinforced learning control tasks, as well as all sorts of deep learning experiments. It's a huge area of research, auto ML, and then applying these kind of hyperparameter tuning tools into these deep learning training algorithms. So for hyperparameter tuning, we have a lot of different interesting black box optimization techniques. And the most simple ones are random search where you randomly select configurations or grid search where you explicitly uh, set a uh, grid to search through. And then we also have ideas like Bayesian optimization, evolutionary algorithms, reinforced learning, and then also some people have looked at differentiable search with things like differentiable architect architecture search. And there's also differentiable data augmentation where you have uh, like a continuous relaxation that makes it so you can do gradient descent through the black box process and these kind of interesting ideas. But this is definitely one of the most interesting uh, and successful ideas out there for doing this black box hyperparameter tuning, which is population-based training. So population-based training is this idea that inspired by how you might be observing an experiment if you're just watching a bunch of experiments running, where you would stop and evaluate, take the top K percent of the models, and then you would copy them and try to use other kinds of hyperparameters to build from there. So you throw away the configurations that didn't lead to any uh, good initialization point, you're gonna clone the ones that have been performing well, and then you're gonna perturb the parameters of those uh, models that have already kind of started the learning progress or started to find some useful 
uh, descend on the loss function. So it's a very interesting evolutionary algorithm that not only learns a fixed configuration of hyperparameters, but learns a schedule of hyperparameters. So you don't have to train each model all the way till it's finished training in order to evaluate the hyperparameter configuration, you do it dynamically, and then at the end you have a trained model, which is different from all these other models, where you might have a trained model, but you've trained so many models to search through it, so it's not as efficient as this technique, and this probably pr produces a better single best model and is better for uh, resource efficiency. This idea of population-based training has also been extended to explore its use in data augmentation uh, policy learning. So data augmentation policy learning is where you're searching through uh, say different magnitude parameters for each of the augmentation like difference between rotating an image 30 degrees compared to 45 degrees uh, probabilities of applying each operation say with 30 percent probability you sample rotation 15 percent horizontal flipping 10 percent brightness and so on these parameters that make up the overall policy of data augmentation so auto augment is a popular technique that uses reinforcement learning to search for the uh, the augmentation policy compared to population-based augmentation which performs a bit better on these uh, tests and it's important because auto augment is a bit more uh, computation heavy. It has, you know, as they say here, it requires a thousand times less GPU hours to run. So obviously that's important. So to quickly go over the two components of this uh, population-based banded optimization algorithm, we're combining evolutionary algorithms with the Bayesian optimization controller. So evolutionary algorithms have an initialization point. In this case, we have some heuristically se selected set of hyperparameters. So most importantly are the ranges that these hyperparameters take. And so if you don't have a Bayesian controller, you might need to have a really uh, well crafted range of hyperparameter values because you don't have any guidance for how to select it. So if it's selecting randomly from a wide range, it could result in a lot of points that don't work. So say when you're searching through learning rate configurations, you might find that there's a range, if you select it from say 0.001 to, to these really small values of learning rates, you might find that a space of that just doesn't learn at all. So that's how you initialize the agents and then they start learning and then they're evaluated. So they're gonna, you're gonna take the top K percent and you optionally might do some kind of crossover where you say uh, mutate the hyperparameter configurations, say take the averages or any way of aggregating the hyperparameters between these top K percent agents. And then you might have some kind of stochastic perturbation mutation algorithm and so on this kind of idea. So what we're changing about the, this evolutionary framework in this Bayesian optimization controller is when we're doing this mutation, instead of just sampling uh, from the predefined uh, set of points that you have some kind of predefined probability or just you know doing some kind of addition between the uh, taking like the mean between two of these top k percent agents we're not going to use a Bayesian controller to select how to mutate which points we want to query next to mutate as we're uh, evolving the uh, training. This blog post from the Distilled publication is one of the best explanations of Bayesian optimization that I highly recommend if you're trying to do a deep dive into the Bayesian optimization algorithm. But from a high level overview, the basic idea is that we have a prior assumption about how this black box function, how the outputs are distributed. So we assume that it has a normal distribution and then we're sampling these points as we get our posterior empirical distribution and we regularize this with our prior knowledge about what the space might look like. So we sample these points that give us the most information about this, uh, how this is distributed. We normalize this with some KL divergence terms and it's kind of like a high level overview, not too deep and detailed, but over, overview of this idea of Bayesian optimization, we have some assumption about what this uh, black box landscape might look like that we use to guide our acquisition function to select points that are worth querying for understanding the landscape better, assuming that it's normally distributed. So with that together, here's the idea. We have our same algorithm of population-based training, but now when we're copying the network weights from the top K percent agents, we're using the Bayesian optimization to select the new hyperparameter configurations for these agents rather than some kind of heuristic uh, setup. In addition to population-based training and the new population-based banded optimization algorithm, the authors are also going to compare their experiments against the ASHA uh, optimization algorithm. And in this blog post, Massively Parallel Hyperparameter Optimization, it shows you how to use it. And I've made a video exploring how to use ASHA in the Determined AI platform. You don't have to implement this yourself. And it's pretty, you know, pretty pain free to use. And I highly recommend checking it out. And it'll be linked in the description of this video or linked in a comment on the video. But anyway, so here's the algorithm behind ASHA. So ASHA is building on this idea of hyperband. And in hyperband, the core idea is that you don't allocate the same amount of computation to each hyperparameter configuration. So you have this sample of hyperparameter configurations. Say you give 20 epochs to one, eight to another, 22, 36, seven, these random configurations. And asynchronous uh, having is a way to 
uh, have, have do this without having to wait for all the agents to sync up. So this is a huge benefit of not having to wait to synchronize all the distributed training agents. If say you have eight different uh, GPUs training a model and so on, these kinds of distributed learning algorithms, which are you know really what all of these large scale experiments are running on. And it's a strategy to overcome the challenges with the bottleneck of synchronizing it for a controller like the uh, Bayesian optimization controller. So also in the paper, but omitted from this video and that I think are worthwhile to study is they do describe how the Gaussian process uh, covariance kernel does let you do uh, parallel selection, but I don't exactly understand how this works. So I'm not gonna try to explain it. But I would really appreciate if someone watching this has a good explanation on this. And then also the regret bounds for this algorithm. Uh, personally, I've studied say the upper confidence bound, the UCB regret bounds. And I have a video in, in an earlier Henry AI Labs reinforced learning series that covers this idea, but I haven't really, uh, I wasn't really able to quickly understand the regret bounds for this algorithm, but here are a couple other ideas that are in the paper if you wanna check that out. Here are the results with online control in the online reinforced learning setting in the OpenAI gym with tasks like bipedal walking, the lunar lander, the hopper task, and the uh, pendulum where you, I think this is where you do the cart pull balancing or something like that. But anyway, so the key hyperparameter to watch here is B. B is the number of agents in the population. So four, eight, this is more realistic for these experiments with large scale robotic learning systems and so on, where you don't want to have, you know, 32 different agents being optimized in the population and ideas like that. So in this case, we see the gains of the PV2 algorithm compared to the original population based training, as well as the performance of ASHA, and then just regular Bayesian optimization, and then random search through the hyperparameter. So uh, this task they note in the paper isn't really as hard as these other tasks. So these results maybe aren't as important to watch. Uh, and then you probably see the trend indicates which are the harder tasks, maybe this hopper task. But so we see this gain between the PB2 over the original PBT algorithm. So as shown in this gap, uh, you have an efficiency gain from the PB2 algorithm with the banded optimization. And if you do scale up, if you want to get back the performance of the population based training, the original algorithm, you just need a larger population size, but the PB2 thing is still a little more efficient. And these are the results with respect to the hyperparameter ranges. So again, with PBT, you have to, uh, manually design a well-defined range of hyperparameter values compared to the Bayesian optimization, which has this uh, prior search over picking which hyperparameter regions are worth exploring further. And then if interested, these are the learning curves of the different algorithms throughout the training and uh, the reward they achieve over the time steps. So here are the results in the offline reinforced learning setting where we're not uh, collecting trajectories with the current policy and showing that the PB2 algorithm continues to improve over the original population-based training algorithm across the Atari breakout game and the uh, Space Invaders game. Thank you so much for watching this overview of the new extension to population-based training, the population-based banded optimization algorithm, combining these ideas of learning a schedule of hyperparameters that evolve throughout training and then dynamically adjust the hyperparameters through training by using a Bayesian controller to guide the selection of the next hyperparameters, showing improved performance in these online reinforcement and offline reinforcement learning control tasks, and a very important uh, toolkit to have for robotic learning and making this training more efficient and not needing large population sizes in the batches in order to make this hyperparameter tuning algorithm work. Thanks for watching. Please stay tuned for the rest of the AI Weekly Update series and subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos.